Hello and welcome everyone to Ukrainian Blockchain Hub. I am Maria Bochok and today I'm interviewing Juan Li, uh, Vice Chairman, Director of Asia Pacific Digital Institute, CEO of NextChange and uh, entrepreneur who has over more than 30 years of experience. Am I correct, Juan? Yes, I have been around for a long time. Yeah, so we will talk about it a bit later, but uh, the main topic why I wanted you, I wanted to inter uh, interview you is uh, Hong Kong Blockchain Week, which is to happen at the beginning of March. So how are the preparation going? Well, as you know, with any large scale event, there's a lot of moving pieces, but I'm, I'm uh, happy to say many of the pieces are moving together. So we are very excited to be hosting Hong Kong Blockchain Week from March 2nd to March 6th. Uh, tell uh, please exactly the place, uh, the time, and uh, how, uh, how, are you, how do you feel now? I mean, this is really large scale. This is not the first time. How was the previous time and how, uh, do, you, how do you think the next time will be? Sure, so uh, this is our second annual Hong Kong Blockchain Week. Last year we had 4,000 plus people. We had almost, uh, you know, I would say over 170 speakers from 50 plus countries. And we did all of that when Bitcoin was at, you know, 3000 plus. So it was a very difficult period of time. However, we were able to galvanize the community and they all came together. This year, we'll be hosting the event uh, from March 6 to or March 2nd to March 6th. But the main event, which is called Block O2O, will be on March 3rd to 4th. We will be hosting this event at mm -hmm. the Ocean Marriott, you know, in Hong Kong. So now uh, Bitcoin is over eight thousand uh, dollars. Is it going to be easier or not? Well, it's always a challenge to bring this many people in the blockchain community to one place at one time. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because you really need to uh, reach out to the community. Mm -hmm. Right, blockchain people have a sense that. They want to feel like uh, this is the next big event to go to. Mm -hmm. And so bringing that mo momentum into Hong Kong, you know, we're very excited. We believe we can execute, but, you know, we still have a little bit of ways to get there. Okay. Uh, whom among speakers are you expecting, like, the most, and you would like to introduce them already? So it's 100% uh, they are definitely be on the stage. Uh, and... Uh, are you expecting to listen to, to their presentations yourself, probably? I listen to every presentation. <laughs> I know, but I mean, okay, it's, it's not very proper, but probably some of your acquaintances whom you consider um, are very worth listening to, you may mention now, please do that. Sure, uh, we have a number of uh, high profile speakers. We have Tom Trowbridge, from, uh, the president of Hedera Hashgraph, uh, we're going to have the Undersecretary of Innovation and Technology from Hong Kong. So it's a government-supported event, David, Dr. David Chung. Mm -hmm. We have um, Dr. Ben Gersel. I'm sure many people are familiar with Singularity Net and yeah. the Sophia the Robot from Hanson Robotics. Yeah. Um, and also we have uh, uh, my Fujimoto, Miss Bitcoin. So we have a good roundup. By no means is this the only speakers. We already have... 70 plus speakers that have already signed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're having many more higher profile speakers as well that are coming on board, but we haven't been able to announce them yet. Okay, uh, what about, for example, Henry Arslanyan, who is the head of uh, FinTech and, uh, in Asia and crypto? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, sure. he's also, uh, he will be speaking on, on the stage. Yes, Henry will be speaking. Uh, he's one of our uh, featured speakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is the current chairman of the FinTech Association and uh, the head of FinTech and, and, and crypto uh, for PwC. Yes, yeah, well, we, we've been speaking and also he's uh, um, having now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, lectures on FinTech in Hong Kong Institute. Yes, I think he wears many, many hats, um, yeah. and that's why he's a feature speaker. Most people generally that we have speaking that are uh they are where they are today because they're doing many things and they're very good multitaskers they are very experienced as well as are you for example as i mentioned you are in financial services for over 
30 years, 30, 13 of them, if I'm not mistaken, you spent in Silicon Valley. You've been running asset management companies, hedge funds, uh, VC funds, and now you're mostly into crypto. So my question is, you've been dealing a lot with traditional, traditional fiat money and cryptocurrencies now. So what would you choose, fiat or crypto? Well, I think it's a combination of both, but I think where we see is a, there's just so much more evolution that's taking place just by looking at the small market capitalization of crypto versus the general asset class. It represents, you know, a tiny fraction, much less than 1%. So the growth is going to be coming from crypto. Um, uh, but it doesn't mean that fiat goes away. It just means that it's a complement, and then there is a new asset class that it will start to become a more significant portion of what I think institutions will have to look at in the future. So it's rare that you get to see a new asset class develop in uh, a career, and I've been able to see this evolve. You stated before that cryptocurrencies and blockchain will have the most impact on financial services. So uh, when do you expect there will be the time when cryptocurrencies will be like really a top one priority if we are talking about finances? And will there be some this time or not? Or still it will be like different asset, still um, it's not so important, not on the same level as fiat. Is it possible or does it sound like utopia, something like that? Well, I think what it is is that, you know, every industry that is evolving at a hyper pace has the whole hype curve. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the hype curve uh, move up dramatically in 2017 and, and come down dramatically in 2018. Mm -hmm. So we, meanwhile, the reality curve is moving up and the hype versus reality curve are intersecting. But just bear in mind that no one would ever find any interest in any industry if there wasn't hype. Because if you just look at the reality, it takes so long. How can anyone be, uh, I guess, how can a real uh, movement happen when the reality of a industry takes a much longer time to execute? In terms of the impact of blockchain and crypto on finance, I think open fi or decentralized finance is one of the main topics, but this is only in the beginning phases. Um, I believe that blockchain in uh, finance is very important because innately it's an industry where there's a lot of middlemen, right? And whenever you look, talk about blockchain, you want to get rid of the middleman, focus on consensus, and figure out other ways of providing security of transactions. So it's a natural place. My, many losers will be uh, littered, but the few that win, they'll win very big. Okay. When do you expect the next hype to happen, and will it happen? Sure, that's actually a very good question. Generally, an asset class doesn't have hype or a bubble back to back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what I expect to see is um, a gradual pace of the evolution uh, and that it will become much more measured mm -hmm. and it will not necessarily happen in the same way of the hype. Mm -hmm. So what we see in the next, let's say this year, this year we'll start to see evolution of the real technology, the use cases, uh, and, but the hype of it won't be as accelerated as before. Generally, you get a lot of hype when the market cannot be quantified. Mm -hmm. People don't really understand the industry. And then you just, and there's really no earnings or no revenue so people are looking at pie in the sky. Generally, the people that are involved in the market are not experienced. They don't have strong hands. They don't have a lot of capital. So what happens is that you just get a lot of momentum built on euphoria. Mm -hmm. When the real players come in, just like what we saw in the dot-com bubble and the bursting of the dot-com bubble, afterwards, real companies were established. So out of a negative situation generally comes tremendous amount of ingenuity and strong companies because it takes a lot of a lot for them to survive during this kind of period so do you expect now um, like main players come into game 
this year or next year because the hype has ended and still we don't have another one. So uh, during this period, is this the, is this the best time uh, for like main institutional players uh, to enter the game? Well, already there's a tremendous number of financial services companies involved in blockchain just because they're not talking about it publicly. It's probably a lot sure. of private blockchain. So I mean, almost every major institution is involved, but they're just not making big announcements. I think. Uh, so uh, not, what not we making some, but still not not big amount of them. Sure. So what we what we're seeing is that uh, you know there are tangible evidence of real technology. Um, that is that might serve as um, a backdrop, but the most important thing is use cases. Mm -hmm. Industries develop not based on the technology, but the use case. You don't care what's behind a television. You don't care that it's run by a uh, chip. You don't really care about you know all the technology involved. You care about what the shows that come on it, right? So. That, uh, in, in a way, we will succeed with blockchain and crypto if people don't focus on blockchain and crypto, but just focus on use cases and they, can't, they don't even know that blockchain is behind it. I see. Uh, may you also outline the main crypto slash fintech trends for 2020? Because I'm sure that uh, many people would like to know them better and probably make their own research on that. Sure. I think one of the biggest trends is the... Uh, digital RMB. I was recently in China mm -hmm. and definitely there is a movement towards uh, the maybe the the world moving its crypto um, epicenter to China. Really? That will be a major major trend in 2020. Uh -huh. We see that uh, there will be other uh, digital currencies that will start to uh, be pairs traded and announcements will start to be made. I believe that it will become an important part of not just trading between different digital currencies, but trading from the fiat and also to the digital currency. So that's going to be very important. The other thing I would say is a very important trend is DeFi, decentralized finance. It's already happening. It's one of the hottest trends in the Silicon Valley. We see that many companies are using uh, blockchain, at the uh, distributed ledger, as a means of recording, having the ability to have um, immutable information. So this is all kind of coming into play. Uh, I think there will be trends where um, it won't be just private blockchain, but you know, DeFi, DeFi will be involved very much in the public blockchain. Mm -hmm. Well, the other trend I see is the health industry will be definitely a beneficiary of records and the whole life cycle of a patient that we go from birth to death and that it's not you know, something that the records or payments or insurance resides with any institution, but you have a lifelong record that you can keep over uh, you know, uh, blockchain that you can then look on and see the history behind your own health. We see um, quite a bit of trend in terms of the evolution that um, we'll see more and more examples of how the STO market will evolve. It's a good thing that there's been, um, it's underhyped right now mm -hmm. because the regulatory uh, 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 framework as well as the infrastructure in place. But I, I assure you, if not by the end of this year, early next year, there will be a massive STO, then everybody will be jumping into this as well. So what I think is that, you know, we're moving into a interesting next phase of blockchain and crypto. More institutions are talking about it. They're not actually pulling the trigger in terms of investing in this asset class. However, we'll start to see visible signs that there will be more and more uh, assets going into this space by larger players. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, afterwards, after our interview, I will uh, make research by myself on this crypto trends because you're talking very uh, interesting stuff. 
Uh, John, uh, also talking about healthcare, you mentioned uh, your platform, Next Change. Uh, I was interested to find out that you're focused like on healthcare, fintech, blockchain, media. Uh, what what did I miss? This is really interesting. How did you mix it up, and how these uh, like media and healthcare, how they are gonna be like interrelated here? From my part, I'm interested in media, for example. Yeah, so uh, what we do is we focus not just on blockchain, mm -hmm. okay? We focus on fintech, AI, health tech, and smart cities, and uh, these days now in entertainment technology. So mm -hmm. we're not just focused on blockchain. But what we find is that by involving ourselves in these kind of different verticals, and some are not verticals, like blockchain is not a vertical. Mm -hmm. So what we find is that the opportunities in blockchain we see way before they will be appearing in the blockchain world. So we will be talking to a health tech company. Uh, they're not interested in blockchain, but as they evolve and become larger, they start to uh, delve into blockchain. We were talking to them years ago. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of things are very beneficial and we find that we get an earlier edge and what we're doing with health, health tech is we are investing um, and we are helping to venture build some of these type of companies. I see this is really important I think in terms of especially healthcare as well. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't see it before but I would like to also uh, find out about your platform as well more in the future. So as far as I mentioned before Joan, uh, this interview will be also viewed by Ukrainian crypto community and some of the community from the countries abroad uh, from in our crypto chat, which I mentioned before. Maybe would you like to invite them and please tell them a few words about the upcoming Hong Kong Blockchain Week, because I'm sure a lot of them would be interested in. Well, first of all, I have been to Ukraine and, and, and where you are in Kiev many times. There is so, in Hong Kong. Yes. Have you so, been there? Um, I, but I haven't been there when blockchain became prevalent. So okay, it's, because, uh, I must say I want to I return. Okay. Uh, what I, the message I want to send to them is that, um, you know, Ukrainian uh, blockchain community is vibrant. It's uh, becoming much more, um, I would say, broad-based, that they have many more things to offer than just uh, the programming. They have uh, interesting products. And by the way, I'm also an advisor to a company uh, in uh, the Ukraine as well that's focused on blockchain. So okay, but uh, what I would name is it. I would love to invite them all to come to Hong Kong Blockchain Week. And why? Because uh, we're starting to see very interesting use cases. And Hong Kong has uh, one of the largest uh, penetration of banks in the world where de decentralized finance will be very important. And what I'll I think you'll find is that there will be many customers that you'll find in Hong Kong for the Ukrainian community. And I would invite you to come and meet them because there's institutions, there's startups, there's collaboration with many of the uh, these the people in the ecosystem and there are investors that are investing in project so please come between may uh, march 2nd and march 6th and especially march 3rd and 4th to the block 020 i think it's important everybody who would watch it they will definitely consider coming to hong kong blockchain week thank you so much joan for an interview today i was interviewing joan lee a director and vice chairman of asia pacific digital institute and ceo of exchange i am maria Volchok from ukrainian blockchain hub see you next time and thanks for watching